Artificial intelligence is a field of research that has received a lot of investment in the last few decades, and for some time now it has been used to solve quite specific problems, where other algorithms were having difficulties in reaching a practical solution. Recently, AI has been reaching mainstream attention, a lot thanks to DALI, an AI model capable of generating pictures from text, and now GPT, that is a general natural language AI. On this video, we'll talk about GPT-3 and how to use it to generate your own Julia Coth. Both DALI and GPT are developed by OpenAI, a company specialized in AI research. Usually, AI solutions are used for specific problems, as for example, character recognition, active noise cancelling, and audio classification. But GPT has been in everyone's tongue because it seems to be able to solve a vast amount of tasks and can even help you on your programming projects. While it has only now reached mainstream attention, the first iteration of this model has been released in 2018 and was trained with thousands of books. The second version, GPT-2, was released in the next year using 40 gigabytes of website data and increasing tenfold the number of train parameters. The third version, GPT-3, was released in 2020 with 45 terabytes of data and 175 billion parameters. It has been, in the meanwhile, updated with web data up to 2021. In GPT-3, AI is applied to natural language processing. The model understands and interprets your written prompt and then uses it to generate a written answer that makes sense based on all the data that it was trained on. The user can make multiple prompts and the model will understand that the follow-up questions share the same context so you can finally adjust the output that you want to achieve with several prompts. GPT-3 is non-deterministic, so the same question can output different answers. It is not a search engine, it's a model that processes your input and tries to find a personalized solution to the problem that you have identified. Okay, so let's go now for the practical part of this video that is going to be interacting with GPT-3. You can use the chat GPT. Uh, currently, it is unavailable. Um, I can go ahead and click it here. And it's currently at capacity. So uh, one alternative that you guys can use is the playground. So go to beta.openai.com slash playground and you can still use uh, GPT-3. So this playground has more options than chat GPT. Uh, you can select your model. There is a couple of models here. These ones on top, they are GPT-3 based as well. So the same as uh, chat GPT. Then there is a lot of options here that you can you can define. Temperature that controls randomness, maximum length if you want to increase the the response from chat GPT. So you have a, a couple of options here. Let's start with some questions. So the first one, uh, what is the mathematical symbol of pi? So for example, I don't have it on my keyboard and I want to obtain the symbol of pi and yeah, I got it. Pi, that's pretty easy. The first question. So let's try another one. How should one explain the usefulness of GPT-3? <laughs> and you will understand why I'm laughing. Um, for uh, Julia programming on the YouTube tutorial. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is what I'm currently doing. But let's see uh, what, um, what GPT-3 three things I should be doing. So, yeah, it can help you write and make development faster. You can also talk about GPT-3 automatically generating code. And you can use GPT-3 to help you debug code. And th that's actually what we are going to do here. So let's then use uh, GPT-3 for Julia. So for example, I want to get a random value from 0 to 1 in Julia. And can uh, GPT-3 help me with that? Sure thing. You just need to use the run function. So we can even try this code over here. 
so x is generating a random number and I can print it. <laughs> of course, there is no need for that. Rand already prints because I didn't use a dot and comma. But anyhow, uh, yeah, that's that's perfect. Okay, so GPT-3 is then able uh, to give us some help regarding Julia. Let's write something a little bit more difficult uh, for him to handle. So I want to write a Julia snippet where you generate a sinusoid. Um, let's also use a random value, random amplitude from 0 to 1 and a frequency equal to 0 0.01 of the sampling frequency. Also, a phase of pi divided by 2. Let's see how it goes. Let's submit this to GPT-3. This is always very impressive to me. Um, how can uh, an AI model like GPT-3 write code? But it is, uh, and uh, it's almost completely functional. And um, there is a couple of things here that hopefully, if you already watched the previous tutorials, you can check that something is wrong. That's because uh, GPT-3 learns from the internet and there is a lot of different programming languages on the internet. And you'll see that <clears throat> it tries to write Julia code. And you can see here from this broadcast function, but um, it also mixes from probably other languages that, that he had found previously on the internet. So you can check that, for example, a lot of broadcast functions are missing inside here. Let's ask him. It seems that you have missed the broadcast function when multiplying. multiplying. Rewrite the code. So let's give it a look, see if we can... If we can find the solution for this issue. Yes, 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 you're actually correct. And and I think that everything is okay now. L let's give it a look. Th that's it. There is no error. Okay. So one thing that is missing now. Um, so he prints with the println function, but I want him to plot as well. So can you also add to the code, add to the plot of the sinusoid? And let's see if he can do it. Probably yes. Um, It is doing everything quite well. So let's see how it goes. This is the two extra lines that you have added. And they do seem correct. There is a title, a next label, the amplitude, and there is. That, that's pretty good. I'm just going to use the Plotly uh, because on Plotly I can zoom. But uh, I'm expecting to see the sinusoid there. At least from the code that I saw, everything seems pretty good. It's here. Yeah, everything seems okay. Let's get back to our OpenAI GPT-3. The next task is going to be slightly more tricky. Uh, we are going to ask GPT-3 to convert a code from one language to another. We are going to convert a code from Python to Julia. So we already have a code here. Um, this code is written on Python. And uh, what it does is it generates a Gaussian curve, but on 3D. And so it calculates here, the Z calculates the, the Gaussian curve on three dimensions, and then we plot the surface. 
Uh, you can also see the output here. And let's see how can GPT-3 handle it. I want to convert the following code from Python to Julia. Let's copy and paste and see how it goes. Yeah, it is using linear algebra. This is no longer needed. The rest seems fine, I guess. Match grid is something that it's not available natively on Julia, but uh, let's copy and paste and see what errors are we expecting here. So the first one, yeah, it's the mesh grid. Uh, it's the main issue, but uh, no issues because we can ask our friend here to change that. So can you change the mesh grid to a for loop? And hopefully it can. So everything is the same as before. <laughs> this is always impressive. Um, but uh, yeah, he created a for loop for both dimensions, the X and Y. And then it's also calculated with the Z variable as we have done before on Python. And in the end, he plots the curve. Let's see, let's see how it goes now. Hopefully there is no errors now. Ah, <laughs> okay, uh, it's only in two dimensions, though. <laughs> it is actually a Gaussian curve, and it is uh, working well, but it is on two dimensions. Can, can, we, can we plot in 3D? Also plot the curve as a 3D surface. Let's see how... GPT-3 handles it. Okay, a little bit of an explanation here. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. And here it is. So it's not very different from the previous plot. The only thing different here is the type. Now it's a surface. And yeah, looks pretty good. GPT-3 was able to handle it very well, actually. So we only need to do two corrections here after we have asked for, for the code. Uh, yeah, th there is this linear algebra. This is no longer needed on Julia. But uh, besides it, the code is functional. Perfect. So for our next task, uh, we have um, a Julia code here with a couple of errors. Let me quickly open it. So you can see here, I tried to compile it and there is an error. The error is on X. <laughs> it already has a value. This error is a little bit tricky. Um, the main issue with the error is regarding X. And uh, you'll see that our indexing, it's using this curve parentheses and it should be a square bracket. But uh, let's see how GPT-3 can handle it. I got the following code in Julia that it's not that it's not compiling what could be wrong with it let's paste it and see how can he handles it um, this is already very good the parentheses, you see that the parentheses are already changed with brackets. Nice. But yeah, something is still missing and it's regarding the index. So you guys know that uh, Julia doesn't start indexing at zero, starts at one. And uh, GPT-3 did found one issue uh, with the code, that was the brackets, but uh, it's missing the indexing here. So, Julia indexes start at 1 and not 0. Can you change that on the code? 
So we have just asked GPT-3. Yes, you can change the code starting indexing at one. And another great thing that it did is, so we started from zero up to 99. And what it did was, yeah, it just offset the first value of K and the last one as well from K. Um, th this is pretty good. So if we compile it, then of course it's going to be running. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so um, I hope you guys are as much impressed as I am uh, regarding GPT-3. But what we have done here was, first we have learned how to handle GPT for small questions. Um, we use also GPT-3 to create code. Now, you can see that sometimes it doesn't do it the right way initially, but you can fine tune it uh, with a couple of prompts for him to go exactly to the direction that you want. Um, and we were able to write the code that we wanted. And then we also use GPT-3 to convert between uh, Python and Julia. That's because there is a lot of code online from different languages. And sometimes, even if you use different types of code, you are still trying to achieve the same thing. And that's why GPT-3 is able to try to convert from one code to another, because you already saw examples of both languages trying to achieve the same thing. And then on the end, we use GPT-3 to correct some bugs that we have found on our code. It was not able to find all the bugs initially at the first prompt, but it was able to reach there. And that's all that matters. That's all for today. We'll meet again on the next tutorial.